friends and welcome to Tuesday and this is going to be a canning video. Today we took ground beef out of our freezer and also some ground venison and we are going to can it. So I'm going to show you step by step what we do. From the diary of my grandma Fanny, April 17, 1942. Daddy was planting asparagus. I cleaned the upstairs and I cleaned dandelion for daddy for supper. He thought it was very good. So the first step we're going to do in this ground beef is I took a bunch of ground beef out of the freezer. Now I added some peppers and some onions and then here I found some deer burger. So we're going to add the deer burger to the ground beef. We're going to saute all of this so it's cooked. And then we're going to show you then what I'm going to do next is we are going to put it in pint jars. So this is what we're going to can. I wanted to get it all out of the freezer before it gets freezer burnt and the only other way to preserve ground beef other than freezing it is to can it a whole bunch of onions to it because we really want to get that gamey taste out of the deer meat. So we have a whole bunch of onions and we're going to saute it and we're going to drain all of the fat and I'll show you what we do next. It's all that we sauteed the ground beef and now we are going to put them in our jars. Right now I have my jars in very hot soapy water because I want to make sure there is no bacteria in those jars. I am very very careful when I'm canning any kind of meat. And so when I'm finished having the jars washed we're going to assemble everything here. Canning ground beef is the easiest canning recipe you're ever going to find. Now I do not can my meat raw. That's just a preference of mine. I don't like seeing it in the jars, cooked in the jars that way. But that is just my preference. A lot of people will can their meat raw. For me, I'm sauteing my ground beef and then we're going to make sure we drain as much fat off that ground beef as we can because we don't want a lot of fat. And then we're just going to put it in the jars and I'm going to add some broth to it. And that's how I can my ground beef. And then all you have to do is open up a jar of meat and you can put it to your spaghetti sauce, casseroles, or whatever you want. So after my jars are done sterilizing, we're going to get back to you right here. I'm going to show you what we do next. Alright, so we have the meat sauteed and we have it drained of the fat. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to fill our jars. So it has onions and it has peppers and I did put a little celery to it because I had some I need to get used up. But I want to point out to you something that um, my grandma instilled in me is when you are canning, make sure you have your supplies ahead of time. You don't want to be in the middle of canning and then find out you don't have enough of jars or you don't have lids or you don't have what you need. And that just brought to my attention that I only have 12 pint jars left. So I need to go and get some more pint jars. And if I wouldn't have looked ahead of time, I would have been in the middle of this and so I ran out. So we would always want to keep that in mind. So as you see, I'm filling them fairly full. And I don't know how many pounds of meat this was. If I am correct, it's generally one pound of meat per pint. I think I'm correct in saying that, but I am not sure. I really don't do a whole lot of measurements when I do my canning. So I'm not sure if that's right, but I think that's the general rule of thumb. So I'm going to finish filling these up and then I'll show you what we do next. Jars are full and it gave us two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 
and gave us 12 pints. That's 12 meals for my husband and I. So the next thing we're going to do is, now a lot of people will use water. I don't really care for water. I think that um, a broth is so much richer flavor, but water is what most people use and a lot of people use. But we found that we like using broth. And so you can use beef broth. Um, I actually am using turkey broth. Now it really doesn't make much of a difference in the flavor because your ground beef, it's going to bring out the ground beef flavor, but it was 99 cents and so I figured, you know what, I'm going to go with the turkey broth. I wouldn't use chicken, but um, vegetable broth or beef broth is really good. And the chicken and the turkey broth. Turkey broth is really good too. So we're going to fill these all up to the top and with our broth. Now ground beef is something that I don't have on stock on my pantry all the time because ground beef is so expensive. But I was given some of this venison. I added to it and that was from my son-in-law. And so I'm going to use the venison. I'm going to use the ground beef that I did get and we're going to mix it. If you like venison and you have a way to get venison, venison is a really good thing to can because when you can it, it takes out the wild taste of venison. You don't have that wild taste as much, and especially if you add onions and other ingredients to it. Meat needs to be pressure canned and this will be at 75 minutes at 11 pounds pressure because it's pints. If you're going to do it in quarts, it has to be 90 minutes at 11 pounds pressure. Now I will go to about 13 to 14 pounds pressure. That's just my safety that I do. I just like having a little more pressure than what it calls for. We're gonna debubble it. You just take something and you put it in the center and you just go like this a couple times. What I'm using is a spatula that doesn't have the end on it. Sometimes when you debubble, you're going to notice you need more liquid. Now when you go to use your ground beef, you can drain the liquid off of it, or you can add the liquid if you're making a soup or a stew like that. So we're going to wipe our rims, and we're going to put our lids on it, and then we'll put it in the pressure canner. Alright everyone, so the ground beef is finished and I'm taking it out of the canner. Always when you open your canner, you want to open it that the lid is away from your face because it's going to give a lot of steam. So this canner is, is full of black beans, which is an upcoming video, and it's full of the ground beef. So I'm going to show you what the ground beef looks like when we're finished. So here is the ground beef. And that is what it looks like. So when I finish getting all of the jars out of my canner, then I will pan the camera down and show you a close-up look at this amazing ground beef. If you really want to try your pressure canning, go ahead and do ground beef the way we did today's video. It's a great way to stock up on your meat and it's a great way to start learning pressure canning because ground beef is so easy. You know in the freezer if you keep your meat in too long eventually it gets freezer burned but when you can your meat it always stays good and fresh and I've even eaten ground beef that's been four years old and it tastes just as fresh as the day I made it. So I want to encourage you, to those of you who are starting pressure canning, to pressure can some just plain ground beef. I'm telling you, you will enjoy having meat on hand. You can make tacos, you can make all kinds of things in minutes with these special, special jars of home canned ground beef. Take care, everyone, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.